I started designing these customizable silicone vibration isolation dampeners to stop handling noise from my camera rig coming through to my attached audio recorder. This was just meant to be a quick side project, but a very cool by chance discovery along the way with normal household silicon made it something very special and I'm excited to share it with you guys. And I'm guessing some of you out there might find it super useful too. Now there's two versions, one for the M6 millimeter thread and the other for the quarter 20 thread and they both use the same mould. But don't let that limit you since if you need a larger or a smaller dampener all you need to do is scale up or down the print sizes to match the size of the bolt you're after. The great thing is that these isolators can be used in so many other places to reduce vibrations such as 3D printers, drones, radio controlled cars and audio speakers, just to name a few. With one mould you can make five different types of dampeners. Here's an inline male to female isolator and a female to female isolator a male to male isolator and a one-way isolator in male or female that makes great printer feet and due to the soft rubbery silicon base your machine won't move over time like some particularly noisy printers can. Okay, now to my interesting discovery. Originally my plan was to buy some two-part moulding silicone online and during my search I happened onto an instructable that used normal household silicone mixed with corn flour to turn it into castable silicone. So I started experimenting. The first test, when I mixed just the silicon and the corn flour, set in 15 minutes. But the next test, when I added some alcohol-based dye to the mixture, took a day to set and produced an almost gel-like silicon once set. That gel was an interesting discovery in itself, but I needed a firmer silicon, so I started testing different artist paints, both oil-based and water-based acrylic. The strange thing I found with the artist's acrylic paint was that even before adding any corn flour, it started to look like it was curdling. With that insight, I tested just the acrylic paint without the corn flour, and I found that if I kept stirring it after the curdling stage, it became smooth, and then set within 15 minutes to a lovely spongy solid silicon. This silicon is strong and flexible, and I also think it's lighter than typical moulding silicon, which is a plus if you're using this for on a drone or a RC car suspension. Now I'm particularly proud of this mould, as it exceeded all my expectations. You can mould one dampener or two as they're not interconnected. There are three cups in each size. First is for the bolt side. The second is for the nut side. And the third is a reusable plain cup for removing from one sided dampener feet. There are two small caps that fit into the mold injection holes to give you a nice neat finish. The injection syringe is in two pieces and has a funnel on top for easy filling. I've also included a mixing paddle in case you don't have something handy to mix with it. 
the mold should be printed as fine as possible on your machine. I printed at 0.1mm with 3 perimeters and 25% fill with supports. In the orientation supplied, you'll get best finish and accuracy in your print. But remember, your extruder needs to be calibrated correctly as there are close fitting parts with tight tolerances down to 0.2mm. PLA is preferred for the mould due to its accurate finish. OK, now onto the moulding process. Get all your parts together. You'll also need latex gloves or something similar. Washing out gloves what can do. A nut wrench. Something to put everything on such as alfoil cup or lid to mix up to four tablespoons of the silicon mixture, some artist acrylic paint, the silicon in your normal hardware stores come in two flavours. The slightly more common one is the neutral cure silicon, it's typically general purpose and non-corrosive which won't cure for us. The one we need is the acetyl cure silicon that's generally used in bathrooms and kitchens. This has the smell of vinegar when curing. I use the clear colour silicone as the acrylic paint gives all the colour you need. Now to preparing the moulds. All that's needed is to choose which cups you plan to use and insert a nut and bolt into each side. Hold these in place from the outside loosely with another nut or bolt. Now place these in the mould sides. And then take the four clamping bolts and tighten until the two mould sides come together. Then lightly tighten the holding nut or bolt on the ends. Now to injecting the silicon. It's sticky stuff, so use latex gloves. A sheet of our foil and kitchen paper are useful too. Make sure you have everything together as this stuff sets really quickly and you have to work really fast. The silicon setting time is based on how much acrylic paint you use. For, for the approximate 4 tablespoons of silicon, I used about 2-3 to three centimetres, that's 1 inch, of the paint to give me about a 3-5 to five minute pot time, with a 15 minute demoulding time. I mix the paint into the silicon and at first it will go a little lumpy but if you stir it quickly it will gradually smooth out. Without wasting any time, get half the mixture into the syringe. Firmly hold the syringe on the top of the injecting holes and use the plunger to firmly but slowly push the mixture into the mould. Once it's full, the mixture will come out of the small overflow hole next to the injection hole. Now if you're doing both dampeners, quickly do the same to the other side. Once full, push the small mould caps into their holes until they sit flat. You may need to take a little mixture out to do this without them popping back out. Mm -hmm. 
I had to hold mine down at first. Now to demolding. After about 15 minutes, check the excess silicon to see if it's solid. If it is, then you can carefully demold the parts. Once out, I remove the flashing, that's the thin bits of silicon in the mould that's been squeezed into the fine gaps, by carefully pulling it off. I tried using a sharp knife, but that just makes it rough and uh, makes a bit of a mess. Now you'll want to let your silicon continue to cure for another day till you put it to use. It's cured when the smell of vinegar is almost gone. Okay, so enjoy your vibration dampeners. I'd love it if you can share a made one, especially if anyone scales the prints very large or small. If this is popular, then I'll make a double wide version for heavier loads, so let me know if you want this. Okay, so thanks again for watching. If this was useful to you, then please leave a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. Bye.